the book. And here we have page 31. Reverend Henry Alexander Peterson, one of my great uncles. Page 31. What else we have? Page 32, Henry Alexander. Page 33, Henry Alexander. Page 33. 34, the same. Page 503, Mingo Levin Peterson, his father. Page 503. So those are the pages we're looking at today. So let's go ahead and get into page 504, 503 uh, and read that one. So here we have Mingo Peterson. Page 503, 504. Mingo Levin Peterson, who lives near Ridge Spring in Saluda County, belongs to a class of Negroes which is daily growing smaller, but which has exerted a good influence in the race from the days of slavery to the present. All his life he has been a hard-working man and has made for himself and for his family a good name, which the wise man tells us is rather to be chosen than great riches. He was born on June 28, 1853, and so was a big boy when emancipation came. Up to that time he had no opportunity of schooling, but went to the local school after the war. His father was Levin Peterson, and his mother's name was Eliza. She was a daughter of Isaac of Imberley. On March 20, 1880, a backslash Peterson was married to Miss Hannah Irwin of Saluda County. She was a daughter of Smart and Amy Irwin. They have eight children. They are Rev. Henry A., whose story appears elsewhere in this volume, Elizabeth. Mrs. Hammond, Eddie F. Pearson, now in the Navy, Nanny backslash IRS. Bates Albert J., now in France, Willie E., and Robert Peterson. Mr. Peterson years ago saw the advantage of owning his own farm and home and 24 years ago bought the place on which he now lives and has since purchased another farm besides some building lots at Ridge Spring. He has given his children the educational advantages he lacked in his early days and has lived to see them grow up to be men and women of usefulness in the state. Mr. Peterson has not been active in either politics or the secret orders. He is an active member of the Baptist Church and was for a long time a deacon and for 15 years superintendent of the Sunday School. He looks to industrial education as the greatest single factor in the progress of his people. John Mac Jones, one of the most prosperous businessmen of his race and saluted. Okay, so that's John Mac Jones. We're going to stay here, right here with Mingo Peterson. May he rest in power. Long live my great, great, great grandfather, Mingo Peterson. Now, we're going to go to page 31, where my other ancestor. Uh, and well kept grounds. Henry Professor Alexander Martin Peterson, a well my great, 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 great uncle. Courteous bearing and refinement. Henry Alex. Peterson in the thriving city of Greenwood is a new Baptist educational institution which gives promise of great usefulness to the country. It is under the superintendency of a capable and experienced young teacher and preacher, Rev. Henry Alexander Peterson, ABBTH. Rev. Peterson is a native of Ridge Spring, SC, where he was born March 2, 1881. His father, Mingo L. Peterson, is a farmer. His mother, who, before her marriage, was Hannah Irvin, is also still living 1918. When of school age, young Peterson was sent to the public school at Ridge Spring and thereafter throughout. Henry Alexander Peterson. His career as a student, whether in public school or at Schofield at Aiken or at Benedict College, where he completed his course, he devoted himself with singleness of purpose to his books and made a record for hard work and steady progress. He finished at Benedict in 1910. He was converted at the age of 16 and joined Ridge Hill Baptist Church. In 1905, he was licensed to preach and in 1907 was ordained to the full work of the ministry by the Ridge Hill Baptist Church. His work as a pastor began at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church Ridgeway, which he served for two years after that he served as pastor of the First African Baptist Church of Beaufort three years and now serves Crossroads Baptist Church at Greenwood. Through his work as a teacher, Rev. Peterson has been identified with some of the leading denominational and public schools of the state. He taught language at Morris College, Sumter one year, and was principal of the Beaufort High School for seven years. From that position, he was called in 1917 to Inog Minus, Uri, and to superintend the work of the Little River Institute at Greenwood. Already 1,918, the institution gives evidence of wise and efficient management rooms are filled with modern equipment, and the atmosphere of an up-to-date school pervades the place. The neatness of buildings and grounds attracts the visitor. Best of all, what is being done is accomplished without burdening the school with debt. To date, the institution is operated on cash basis. 
The present enrollment of 55 is but a prophecy of the future usefulness of the Little River Institute. Rev. Peterson believes in a symmetrical education of heart, head, and hands. He believes the permanent progress and prosperity of the Negro race must be worked out through the purity of the home. After this should be to carrot the lobes and the people of greater love for the church, the sort of education referred to above together with the estab minus. Lichment of homes and the accumulation of property and the right to exercise the franchise as do other citizens. Rev. Peterson was married to Miss Emma Waller on December 24, 1908. They have five children, Thomas H., Hannah B. L. Vidal, Harold, and Sancta Peterson. They own a valuable and attractive piece of property at Beaufort. J All right, appreciate the love. We have some more of those in there. I have to find them. The Watsons. We'll get into the Watsons, who are also my ancestors, on the next edition of The Petersons.